So the Buckeyes are tearing it up through the air. Record-setting performances out of Dwayne Haskins. I think most national analysts would say that this is right now, by the eyeball test, the second best team in the country. Uh, again, I'm not going to make that evaluation right this second. Uh, we know how talented the roster is based on the recruiting. We know that they haven't been seriously challenged other than the Penn State game. And I mean that they've they've, they've had to play the third quarters, uh, but not seriously to the end, except for in Happy Valley. But, but, but there's a lot of, a lot of issues, minor to a certain extent, but we don't know if they become major when the competition across the other side is Michigan State or Michigan. I, and I think that's what we're seeing is we're we're hoping that these quote minor issues that we thought would be shored up as fans from the outside in um, don't start to aggregate together to end up becoming this snowball. You know, the snowball starts small and then it just starts collecting and rolling downhill. Um, you know, you are a fellow former Ohioan and, and you live in the Northeast. I think uh, we all start thinking about how well this uh, passing game is going for Dwayne Haskins and the Ohio State offense. But then we start to think about, uh, you know, it's beginning to roll really hard into fall and into some nasty weather here um, in October and November in Ohio and in the Midwest. And if the Ohio State offensive line can't really get the run blocking going, and I say offensive line and run blocking because clearly Mike Weber and J.K. Dobbins are proven, you know, thousand yard rushers from the previous season, we are not seeing this offensive line run block as well as they could or as well as they should. And when that is just something that's not on the table, um, it's going to shut down a part of the offense. It's, it's not going to get uh, really keep everyone honest. And uh, what happens when the weather gets not so great and you're really not able to go through the air as much as you'd like? We're seeing Dwayne Haskins. We're seeing an Ohio State quarterback for the first time. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing a completely different complexion of this offense, and he's not terribly mobile. He, he can um, move outside the pocket, and we're extremely ecstatic to, about these vertical passes downfield. But it is um, disheartening to think that, that it may be a one-dimensional offense. Yeah, and that really surprises me. For whatever reason, Regardless of the dominance potentially of the defensive front, and we received obviously very difficult news concerning the long range prospects of this team winning in postseason with uh, Nick Bosa uh, announcing that he's going to give up on the rest of the season and move on and prepare for an NFL draft. But um, that the defensive issues, again, because of the injuries and because of some of the things that we've seen in the last year and a half, don't surprise me as much as not being able to run the football against the likes of Minnesota and Indiana with one of the five or six best running backs in the nation and with his running mate, Mike Weber, being one of the 20 or 25 best running backs in the nation and with an offensive line that's experienced for the most part. That's difficult to watch. It is difficult to watch, and, and um, it's it's still kind of this enigma, like, like you mentioned. You know, when, when we talk, um, you know, before the season starts, you and I talk about what some of the questions mar question marks might be for this Ohio State team, and one of them was that defensive backfield, and we were pretty right on that <laughs> um, as far as that not being a question that's short up still. Um, but I, I wouldn't have you, – you probably couldn't have paid me to guess – that that Ohio State offense could really not get the ball rolling as well as they should um, with these two running backs. It, it really doesn't make a ton of sense. And you see flashes of it uh, with both of those guys just because they are very talented. And we've seen what we can do, what both of them can do. Um, Mike is a little, Mike Weber's a little bit dinged up, but nothing that's going to keep him out of the football game. Uh, and we're really not seeing it become an issue of, a rhythm. Um, they're doing a really good job of kind of keeping the hot hand in offensively, but they really aren't able to uh, block like they should for these two guys. And it's a shame. Got Claire Crawford on the line to talk Ohio State football with the Buckeyes with a road test at Purdue. The Boilers are hot. They lost their first three by narrow margins, and they've come back to win three consecutive games against the likes of Boston College. Uh, that a pretty impressive showing. Uh, 
when the Eagles were ranked at the time and uh, undefeated. And uh, Purdue beat him by 17 points as a touchdown underdog at home. Their latest win, a thrashing of hapless Illinois, 46-7 to after giving up a, a first-half touchdown. And then Purdue um, scoring points all over the place, 10th uh, in the nation in total offense. Um, uh, coming off a year in which they surprised everyone by making and winning a bowl game over Arizona, going 7-6. and six, And you would think, okay, Jeff Brom, it's Purdue. They scored a ton of points. They were throwing the ball all over the field. Well, they tried to, but it was actually the defense that led the effort and just improved drastically from 2016 to 17. Now they've added the offense and got that part of the um, the the team up and running. David Blau is uh, one of the top rated quarterbacks in the nation right now. So Claire, does this have an, I hate to say it, Iowa feel to it? The butterflies in my, in my stomach. <laughs> tell me that it might um they've got a bye week coming up after that um and it's not like it's a trap game because of that but um i i truly hope that this team understands they've talked about uh defensively the big play and it's something that you and i have talked about it's something that uh it, it has yet to become a solved issue. It is a huge, huge problem for this Ohio State defense and for a Purdue offense that's really rolling downhill now. Um, it's it has the um, that creepy feeling as an Ohio State fan where you really don't want you want to be more confident about this game than you probably are right now. Claire Crawford on the line to talk Ohio State football with the Buckeyes. In the spotlight uh, this Saturday night, which isn't a surprise, it isn't anything different, but um, the situation may prove to be their undoing because like last year, just again, a mid-tier Big Ten team road game, uh, a couple of things that pointed out were pointed out to me this week is that uh, like the Iowa situation last year, so we've got a night game, national television audience, I did see a number of comments uh, here and there, why would Purdue be on national TV against Ohio State? It's obviously a light week for college football, not a lot of huge matchups uh, that were obvious choices for the primetime game. But I think uh, ABC knows what it's doing in regards to, okay, Ohio State eyeballs on the sets. That's always going to happen. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this could be a tricky, interesting game uh, with Purdue throwing the ball all over the field at home. The crowd gets hyped if they get off to a good start and we could have an interesting upset mix uh, about uh, 11 o'clock eastern time on saturday night so i think that's what uh, the networks are thinking there i do think that there's some sort of uh you know if we're looking for the silver lining with this defense last week we watched um you know the turning of a leaf of these corners and safeties being a little more hawkish um, and, and a few more turnovers than we've seen in the past couple weeks. So if we're looking for that and we're, and we're looking for maybe, you know, a, a, a soft spot and a chink in the armor for, for Purdue, um, it's possible that this very aggressive Ohio state defense could, uh, possibly kind of change the tide with a turnover. Or How are you enjoying the season, Claire? And I ask that with this thought in mind that for a few storied programs out there that are on top of its game, like Alabama and Ohio State are right now, the fan base is spoiled, mm -hmm. but the fan base is also in kind of a little margin for error that we can feel good. So it's almost like, um, yeah, we got Maryland this week. Well, who do we have next week? Or who do we have in three or four weeks? Because we have to win these next several games coming up and we should win them impressively. And it's almost like a disappointment when it was, uh, oh, it was 42, 20. Why do we give up 20 points? Uh, we, we can't do that. Uh, and it's, it's almost it becomes a, a glance at the schedule and like, okay, well, well, we got three, maybe four games. And the other one, we're just kind of biding time and we're quick to jump and be critical of a team. That's only going to win by three or four touchdowns. Well, it's the luxury of being an Ohio State fan. It's it's the luxury of being able to critique wins. And 
I, I'm very sure there are coaches out there that would rather critique a win and have a fan base that is willing to critique a win than uh, a team that's not winning. So partially it, we are extremely spoiled um, and, and for, for good reason. Um, I'm enjoying the season much like having a donut and eating this really decadent over the top donut and then having a stomach ache after eating this donut. It was great for a moment. It, it felt good. You probably know there's some things that are not great about it for you. Um, and then after the fact, you kind of you kind of do this like, oh, that really actually didn't feel good at all. Um, that's about how I'm enjoying the season. It's, it's refreshing to see the quarterback play that we've seen out of Dwayne Haskins. It's refreshing to see some of these receivers finally um, step up and, and be able to make their mark. Um, but there, there, there are some definitely uh, some things that are red flags that as a fan and as, and as an analyst, I'm, I'm looking at and really almost waiting for that other shoe to drop. Claire, you've really hit home my problem in the whole approach to dieting, and that's that nothing bothers my stomach, and no combination <laughs> of foods ever bother my stomach. I've got like a uh, a stomach lined with steel or something. It, there, there that's are no that's issues that's... ever. I can eat anything. <laughs> you know, it's like pizza topped off by a bunch of ice cream and cookies. And nothing ever. So I'm more motivated by the knowledge that you can't eat like that anymore, Mark. You're no getting old it, it, they would have to peel me off the floor if i ate like that unfortunately that's this just not my mo but yeah that's that's about the best analogy i can leave as a fan claire i know you're paying attention so i won't ask it in the way that i was going to but you know there's a team slightly north of the state border that's that's playing pretty well they, they're they're playing pretty well you know they they look pretty good right now <laughs> what uh, to what team are you referring <laughs> it ain't michigan state it's not oh uh, however they did put uh, a yep. wrench in, in in the plans and 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 the complexion of of the east there in the big 10 uh and you're right it's not michigan state it's michigan and it, and i think and i did say the m-word um you know as a as um, and someone out from the outside looking in and they're not playing exactly how that we thought they could. Um, and they're, I think they're still kind of an experiment right now. They're not exactly playing as well as they should, uh, but they're, they're what every Ohio state fan should be looking to at the end of the season as a coach. And as a player, you should be worried about Purdue but certainly Michigan is going to be a bigger challenge this year, maybe than they have been in the last five or six. All right. I got uh, Claire Crawford on the line talking Ohio state football with the Buckeyes taking on the boilers of Purdue in West Lafayette. Uh, Ohio state won that game 56, nothing. The last time they traveled to Purdue, there's also a game that comes to mind, of course, uh, in urban Meyer's first year in 2012, a big overtime matchup with Purdue in which they were down 22, 14 late got the late touchdown, the two-point conversion, won in overtime. Um, the 2009 team that went to the Rose Bowl and beat Oregon actually slipped up in West Lafayette against a bad Purdue team on that particular day. So it's a, it's a series in which um, they're, they're one of the opponents in the Big Ten, actually, that for whatever reason, the way the scheduling's been worked throughout the years, even before they went to division play, that Ohio State has actually, I believe, played less than anyone else uh, they just don't come up as much as as other teams. But uh, down through the years, uh, they've had some some interesting matchups when Purdue's been decent. Uh, there was a game back in 2000, Claire, you may recall, uh, Drew Brees took his team to the Rose Bowl, and it was all due to a late fourth quarter bomb touchdown pass to knock off the Buckeyes in uh, West Lafayette. Ohio State was en route to a Rose Bowl that year. I think that's the year that he broke the record that JT broke last year, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, yeah, it's, it's not something that I would like for the Ohio State team to repeat <laughs> this year. Absolutely. So you join Claire at Buckeye Claire. No E. No E. Don't do it. Don't. 
do you it. Know, I don't even are. know what you would find if you put an E on it, but it's not good. I promise you. I, I think I'm secure enough in our friendship that I can tell you it's it slipped a few times. Now it never was sent that way, <laughs> but it it slipped. You know the what would that be? That da, 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 whatever it is, yeah. whichever finger slipped, and then I corrected that right away. Thank goodness. I appreciate Absolutely. it.